Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters. Sulky, express yourself with sulky and create with confidence. Brother, it's so easy with brother at your side. And Quilt Cut, easy fabric cutting for quilters. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community. I'm Lori Baker, and with me today is Sue Hausman, sewing and quilting educator, and we are working today with Sulky of America. Thank you, and thank you, Sulky, for sending me to share some of my enthusiasm for the beautiful threads and what we can create with them and how different threads make quite a difference. Yes, now, do. Sulky sent us a beautiful quilt we have over here on the wall, and you'll think that's embroidery, those flowers. Well, yes. they are. They're actually embroidered outlines, and then they are filled with a uh, Sukuneko ink or an inking type for fabric. And the beauty of that is that we've got lots of different techniques combined. Yes. That's some of what we're going to talk about today. All the different techniques. That quilt, by the way, uh, has several different versions and it's in the Weekend Quilting with Sulky book. So if you're looking for that. But as I mentioned, many different threads. And here we see some just basic stitch outs on light and dark fabric, but we're going to see them in real projects. And right below is that beautiful sunflower quilt. And take a look at how fun that is with the beautiful hollow shimmers and the metallic threads. And so you have the option of different threads creating a totally different look. Right. That, that quilt, by the way, instructions in Sulky Secrets to Successful Stabilizing. This beautiful watercolor quilt is done again with, it's stippled with metallics. And a lot of times we don't think about that in quilting. We think of only using cottons and things. So Sulky makes a wonderful metallic thread. They make a wonderful shimmer thread, a hollow shimmer. And so we have lots of options. And if you're interested in making a watercolor quilt, just go to the Sulky's Secrets of Successful Quilting book. That's the one that will give you the instructions for that watercolor quilt. But um, we're going to talk a little bit about applique today. And we're also going to talk about stippling. Here is a fun quilt from Sulky, the Serenity Elephant Walk. And this one is in the Sulky Secrets to Successful Applique book. And you can see that it's actually quilted with a metallic thread. But don't you love how it has the beautiful landscape, the trees. This is raw edge applique. So you can see all those little elephants uh, down at the bottom here are done in raw edge applique. And uh, so are the beautiful trees. And then a little bit lower, we have elephants stitched with beautiful threads. So another fun way to quilt. And just because of some of what we're going to talk about, it's quilted through with those lines. But let's first talk about sulky applique and different ways to applique and different threads. Here we see a piece that has four ways to applique this little flower. And in essence, we're going to start up here at this corner with hand-turned applique. And that one is done using invisible threads. So it was hand-turned, but it really wasn't. It was turned with either sulky tender touch or with a um, water-soluble sol water stabilizer. And I just want to point out that these invisible threads are polyester. They can be ironed over. They can be put in the dryer, of course, from Sulky. And they come in a dark for your darker fabrics right. and in a clear for your lighter fabrics. But as we move around this quilt, there are some different ones. And here you see a fun applique that looks like folk art. And that's actually done in a black rayon thread to look like folk art stitching. Or some people will applique with satin stitch. And this is 30 weight rayon satin stitch. But the one that I want to show and where we're going today is Sulky's newest thread. And that's Sulky's Polylite. And um, this is a very lightweight, 60 weight thread, two ply, very lightweight, and it's polyester. And you can hardly see the little machine stitches around this applique. But if you also look at the background, look at that micro, macro, micro, tiny, tiny stippling, tiny stippling, and it's not thick and boardy. You can feel that, that you reach in and it, it's soft and it's pliable. How could it be pliable with all of that stitching on it? Well, it's because the thread itself is pliable and very soft and very lightweight. This is a set of the Poly Light 
all 36 solid colors and all 24 multicolors. And of course, when you purchase your threads in the Silky Slimline, it keeps them clean, keeps them out of the air, keeps them ready for you to use and handy at your fingertips. It can be hung on the wall as well. But here you see that we have these beautiful colors. Now, why did they come out with Polylite? Well, quilters asked for a thread that looked like silk, that felt like silk, that sewed like silk, that was a little stronger than silk and a lot less expensive than silk. Okay. And Sulky heard them, and that's why they came with the polylite thread. Now, I want to point out that polylite thread also comes in the cone sizes. So, all, many, all the solid colors, in fact, I think all the colors come in the cone sizes because long armors love this, as do machine quilters. And of course, they want a larger quantity. So, you can purchase it either on the slimline spools individually or in the slimline dream package or on those wonderful um, cones for your big stitching projects and your big quilting and your long arm quilting. So poly light thread, and that's what we really are here to talk about today. Here you see it on a fun um, pillow where you don't, it doesn't jump out at you like big thread quilting. It's like soft thread quilting. Yes. Now I have to share, when I saw this, I went, oh my gosh, I love this for hem stitching because it's easy to find colors of thread for hem stitching when you're talking about off-white right. because you want to find thread. You can do a darning thread or a cotton basting thread or even ecru. But when you get into colors, you don't find that. And so now with the beautiful su Sulky, you have the poly light and you use it top and bobbin. And guess what we use to stabilize this? Underneath, we put the Sulky Sticky Fabrisalvi because it completely washes away. So now you're using this very lightweight thread on the top, on the bobbin. They match, of course. Here you see one we've washed away and one we haven't. And then you have the beautiful hem stitching with the wing needle. Right. Wing. And because the poly light is lighter, it doesn't fill up the holes. Doesn't fill up the holes. And the stabilizer doesn't fill the holes because it washes away. Right. So keep in mind these lightweight threads. Now, I love it for bobbins because I can fill bobbins. And I had some here, but it doesn't really matter. But uh, when you do embroidery, here was my hem stitching bobbins. I would match them. This is the poly light top and bobbin. But when you do embroidery, you can have colored bobbins and you can get so much of this fine thread right. on the bobbin. You can do like huge embroideries and not have to fill the bobbin. But again, for your built-in embroideries, it's beautiful. And here's some that I've done. Um, this is stippling in the hoop that I created in the software for the embroidery machine. So you create this in the software, but feel that. It, it's really very... I mean, if you did this little tiny stippling with any heavier thread, it would just be like a board. And yes. we certainly don't want our quilts to be like no. a board. So that's where Polylite, Sulky Polylite is so fabulous for your quilting, again, uh, a beautiful tree leaf pattern done in the poly light with little tiny stripping around, uh, stippling around the edges. So fun, fun, fun. Now, that's your really fine thread for quilting. But how about something heavier? And you know, when we change threads, we usually have to change needles. An 80 embroidery needle or quilting needle will be fine for poly light, be yes. perfect. But when we go into what you're looking at now, which is our vintage quilting, which is done with blendable threads. So here and with cotton, which is a 30 weight, we need to go up to a larger size needle. And so let's talk about that for just a minute because you know, the needle has a groove. This is the front of the needle, and this groove the thread rides in, and that's what protects it. And, right. And of course, the needle has an eye. And by the way, you do need to change your needle often <laughs> and for different projects. And so, with this heavier thread, we want to choose a needle with a deep enough groove and a long enough eye so that it will handle it well. For the 30 weight sulky cotton, which of course is strong Egyptian quality cotton, we recommend a 90 top stitch needle. Now a little test, I got this from Nancy Goldsworthy, is to thread the needle that you actually own. <laughs> and uh, you thread that needle with the thread you're going to use. So I could do this with a big needle, but you wouldn't get the idea. Do you see how this isn't sliding up and down the needle? If it's not sliding up and down the needle, the needle, the th on the thread that I'm going to be using, I need to go to a larger size needle. 
So we recommend the 90 top stitch for the 30 weight sulky, which is what I'm using here. We would go up to a 90 here, or 100 for the 12 weight. Okay. Now, this is a great way to do a quilt with embroidery and get a very hand look. And by the way, our viewers can actually go to the website and download one of these beautiful flowers for free. How nice. And create a block. So these beautiful vintage designs, which I call color work, they're kind of like red work, but they, I call them color work. And I had one more thing I wanted to share about needles because if you're in doubt as to what to use, I feel that this um, Sulky Silk Craft Quilt and Embroider Confidently with Sulky Stabilizers. Uh, on page 135, it says if you're using this type of thread and it goes through it and tells you what needle to use, what stabilizer to use, what, I mean, it really has a lot of complete information for you. But this vintage quilt, the actual stitching blocks are stitched of course, and we use a stabilizer underneath, and I recommend using Soft and Shear, which is Sulky's lightweight cutaway stabilizer. And by the way, Sulky produces all their stabilizers in a one yard pack, which is really nice if you want to try a stabilizer. Right. Um, that's not possible. Many times you, in different stabilizers, you have to buy a great big roll, and then if you don't like it, but now you can buy a one yard pack. It's great for kits and stuff too. Sure. But here's the Soft and Shear. And this is the lightest weight cut cutaway on the market, and that's going to go in the hoop with your fabric. Now, here's the fun part about this block, because this square and a square block is actually pieced totally in the hoop. Now, here you see our background fabric, our base fabric, and underneath that is our Alsucky stabilizer. So, in the hoop, we have the stabilizer, we have the fabric, and we have the actual fabric that we're working on. And the four block is stitched first, and then we add the squares. Now, that's done by simply cutting squares of fabric. I'm sure you can see that the color that you choose as your accent changes it completely. You cut your squares, you cut them into half square triangles. Now, normally people would sew this on with a foot on and the feet right. teeth up, but let's move over to our beautiful brother sewing machine here, and you will see that we've stitched the four square block you know, people think that I actually pieced this, <laughs> nice. but I didn't. Uh, this block on this on this brother is actually done all as an embroidery, and then the next color outlines it, and the final color before piecing does an outline of a seam allowance for you to follow. Then you simply place your fabric square right down like so, and it will stitch right across to the, it'll piece, for piece you. the block piece for you. in the hoop and uh, I use a fabric folding pen before I fold it out so you simply take and put a little liquid on it fold this one out and then you lay the next one on uh, it pretty is pretty straightforward to put the next one on on the side and I have one here all finished for you to look at and as you can see the next step would be to take it out of the hoop and I've got one like that too so take it out of the hoop like so take your block square up ruler and square it up cut it out, and then just go ahead and piece your quilt or make a little pillow, whatever you would like to make. Uh, Sulky actually has a set of the colors for this, which works out beautifully. And I will tell you that this is a fun project to make, regardless of what print, what you're doing it in, uh, you might even want to, and you can go to the Sulky website for the designs, of course. And then our quilts are tied. And a quick tying, this is a this is a little heart that we have actually programmed into the machine with a tie off, a heart, a tie off, and a cut with the scissors. And then it, you just tie it that way. What do you think? I think that's a wonderful way to finish the quilt. Ah. This is an exciting way to do embroidery. It is, isn't it fun? It is. It looks like fun. hand almost. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Thank you for joining us, Sue, and thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope you had a good time today. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters. Sulky, express yourself with sulky and create with confidence. Brother, it's so easy with brother at your side. And Quilt Cut, easy fabric cutting for quilters.